Hello golf fans, Chris Durrell here with RotorPros.com. The calendar has turned over, it is 2021, the PGA season is back. First term of the year we got the Tournament of Champions, it's more of a handshake, meet and greet uh, between all the winners from the previous year. Nice little prize pool, high scoring, so we're dev or low scoring, sorry. Um, but before we get into the, the sheet here a little bit, I want to tell you a little bit about Rotopros for anyone that may be watching this that is not a member. Um, Rotopros.com, this is where you're going to find a nice little video explaining our Slack Rotopros community chat to you. Um, this is where you're going to find our daily free articles. Um, we've, you know, we cover NBA, NFL, MLB coming up. Uh, March, April. We've got NHL coming back as well. We've got EPL, UCL soccer. We've got college sports. Um, we, if there's a sport out there, we pretty much have a cheat sheet and a coach that is covering it. So to get our premium content, um, which is going to be our one-on-one -on -one coaching in the Rotopros community chat, our cheat sheets, um, our rankings, our GPP and cash and value picks, um, skeleton lineups, that sort of thing, you're going to have to get a membership. You can get a free trial right now. Just go over to the top right here, click on that sign up button. We've got three different levels of membership, weekly, monthly, and yearly, with uh, three and seven day trials accordingly with those memberships. And if you use promo code RP50 today, you're going to get 50% off um, your first payment after signing up. So your yearly membership would then become $75 a month, a monthly would become $750, and a weekly would become $2.50 for the week. So make sure to take advantage of that. Join our winning team today. With that, let's take a look at the sheet here for the first week back of PGA. Like I said, it's the Tournament of Champions. Uh, the sheet is posted in Slack chat. We've got a lot of new members coming in over the last couple of weeks here over the holidays. Uh, things have been going really good for college sports, soccer, NBA. Things were great. Finished uh, to UFC before it took a break. So we got a lot of new members coming in. So I just want to kind of go over the sheet a little bit in a few areas that I'm looking at, what some of the things mean. If you've got questions once I'm done and anything I missed, I'm going to be doing a heck of a lot more videos here. So make sure to give me all your feedback and I'll put in the videos whatever you you guys want to see whatever's going to help you out on a week-to-week -week basis so first of all you got your player information um, the country they're from the name the official world golf ranking this number here is just the field strength so it's the average official world golf ranking between all the players then we've got odds DraftKings, uh, FanDuel. it's not out yet so it's not on here but it will be right beside here uh, DraftKings showdown pricing will also be right beside the DraftKings full tournament pricing and then we've got the salary to odds differential so it's just looking at the rankings in the field uh, this player's odds where he ranks in the you know odds to win where he ranks in DK salary and if there's a difference so for instance Hideki Matsuyama he is sixth in odds to win but tenth in DraftKings salary that gives him a plus four that's why it's in green here so there's maybe a little bit of price value there for him uh, just compared to the outright market uh, for the odds and then moving over we've got course history um, so this is just looking at the course so this week it is the plantation course and if you want to get more course information you can come down here to the bottom We've got all these tabs on the bottom you can see like this is the scorecard shows you how many uh, I break down the par fours um, and distances then we look at course history this is the last 10 years at this tournament at this course um, all the leaderboards in there player stats for the last five years and then course stats for the last two years you can kind of look at what holes are easiest and what and what what not um, so course history, this is a player's finish over the last 10 years at a certain event, that being the Tournament of Champions at the Plantation Course. Some weeks it's going to be a little bit different because there may not be any course history. There may only be a couple of years course history, so that's going to change on a week-to-week -week basis. And then moving over, we've got current form. Um, this is a player's, obviously, current form and the finishes in those uh, tournaments so his last tournament second last tournament third last tournament for every player it's not going by week so this isn't necessarily the mayakoba for everyone or the rsm for everyone this is just each player's last tournament second last going back to their last 10 tournaments for each individual player then we've got average finish for the last five events 10 events average DraftKings scoring last five events 10 events for those players and then we move over into the green section sorry about that and when we get into the green section, this is your raw stats. So right now, my stats on the sheet are 60% from this current 2020-2021 season and then 40% from last year because there's a lot of players, especially in this field, the high-end players that maybe didn't play a bunch of fall events. They've only got 10 to sometimes up to only 18 rounds of sample size from this season. So we don't want the numbers to really 
concentrate on small sample sizes when working with stats i always like a bigger sample size so i like to work in last year's stats as well and last year's still pretty relevant um and as the season goes on i'm going to be changing those percentages to the point where we get to like 95 percent current season or even 100 percent current season stats and, and zero on last season and it all depends on the field too. So this week, again, we've got a smaller field, 42 players, as you can see here. So this is their raw stats. So this would be strokes gained um, stats, putting stats, off the tee stats. Um, with the putting stats, uh, last year, you may have noticed I added uh, putting splits. So on bent grass, POA, and Bermuda, this week is Bermuda. I'm going to go ahead and end up deleting the bent and POA. Um, if you want to break down players and kind of where they excel and not, you can go down to the putting splits tab and it's going to show you all that information here for all the players in the field and then moving over in those stats we've got uh, off the tee stats which is your driving driving accuracy good drive percentage your approach stats gir proximity to the hole so greens and regulation is just you know i'm gonna have other videos just kind of explaining these stats a little better if you don't understand them if you're new to golf but you got your greens and regulation how many times a player hits the green um, in one under the par um, so if it's a par four hitting the green sorry in two would be a green in regulation so two strokes under what the par is listed is considered hitting the green in regulation par three that would be uh, hitting the green in one shot par five that would be hitting it in three um, and then you got proximity so proximity is very important because a green in regulation doesn't really exactly tell us all the information it just tells us that they hit the green um, proximity tells us that they hit the green and how close to the green they got so that's uh, this is in feet so 34 feet 9 inches or sorry 34.9 feet um, so obviously lower is going to be better and that's why we see that in green so for instance Colin Morikawa in overall proximity um, is under 34 feet um, which is best in the field here so that's why it's bright green so then we got fairway proximity rough proximity and it all depends on what tournament you're looking at if it's a very forgiving um, fairways very high driving accuracy we're going to want to concentrate more on fairway proximity versus rough proximity if it's a tough tournament where you're only hitting 50 55 percent of the fairways on average we're going to probably want to look at some rough proximity and see who is doing better from the rough um, that's going to definitely stand out and that's something that is going to change each and every week then proximity we've got from different ranges so I use this in relation to whether I'm looking at a, a guy that can drive at 310, 320, 330 yards, or a guy that's maybe a little bit lighter, looking at like a Kevin Knox, um, guys like that that don't drive it far. They average like 280, 290 off the tee. I think Knox is a little more than that after last year. But still, when you're looking at those guys that don't drive it as far, I may be looking at the proximity from 175 to 200 and 200 plus yards, no matter the course, because those guys are always going to be in that range. Um, so not necessarily with the new golf do you need to be a bomber but if you're not concentrating on bombers on some of these courses that are maybe set up for bombers you want to make sure that those guys that you're targeting have good long iron or, or trending in their long irons versus maybe guys that are a little bit longer i'm going to concentrate on the, the 125 to 150 a little bit more 150 to 175 ranges it's all going to depend the thing with golf to remember the most is that it changes each and every week it can even change from round to round when you start considering in weather pin locations um, green speeds and stuff like that so then we've got our scoring stats next par 3 par 4 par 5 scoring and that's just to average um, and then we've got par 5 birdie or better percentage obviously higher the better we want players that make birdies um, so we can see that there Patrick Reed 61.9 percent um, he's been crushing there just recently so that 60 percent weighted on this season is really taking into account Patrick Reed so we've got overall scoring average, scoring average before the cut. So that's like in most tournaments, um, it's going to be like round one and two combined scoring. Um, so that kind of helps when building cash games, guys that do really well in the first two rounds of a tournament come out hot. And then we start breaking that down into round one, two, three, and four scoring. Bogey avoidance, um, birdie or better percentage, and then we've got scrambling and sand saves. When you jump over into this orange section, all as this is, is a ranking of the raw stats that we just went over in the green section this is so that we can you know now put together a model so what you'll see here in this orange section not only is it the statistical rankings of all the stuff in the green that we just talked about but now we can start putting weights into it so all these numbers in the in the orange here are going to always add up to 100 in my model okay not always sometimes i make mistakes and i have um but for 
generally week to week they're going to be 100. So normally I am concentrating on ball striking. That is something I look at each and every week. It just matters if I'm looking more at off the tee versus approach because your ball striking is this approach plus off the tee. Uh, strokes gained approach, strokes gained off the tee here so you can go with an overall strokes gain ball striking um, or something that I do a lot is I'll come in and say okay I like ball striking but approach is much more important so maybe I'll go 25% instead of 30% on ball striking I'll go 25% on approach 5% on off the tee and again that's going to change each and every week depending on the course um, around the green that's kind of like you're scrambling um, I use it over scrambling just because um, it's a little more accurate in comparing players the strokes gain metrics versus your greens and regulation your traditional stats your scrambling um, sand save percentage that sort of stuff I want to look at an overall player strokes gain around the green unless the course is really conducive you know and it does have a lot of sand we maybe want to bake in a little bit of sand save percentage into that as well you can come over here and add that number here but generally I want those numbers to add up to 100 most important each and every week for me, my baseline, again, is going to be about 30% on ball striking, 30% on birdie or better percentage. I'm usually going to get like 10 to 20% on par 4. Even on the tournaments where there's maybe um, more par 4s, or sorry, less par 4s, I'm still going to be looking at par 4 scoring because normally your par 5s, you're going to have the majority of your field scoring there. That's where a lot of the scoring is going to come from. Even on the holes that you guys aren't going to reach in 2, you're going to see a lot of scoring coming from there. Where I find looking at correlations, where guys really stand out on the leaderboard um, on tournament to tournament, year to year type stuff, is par 4 scoring. It may not show up in correlation sometimes because just an individual player correlations because you know you're just a lot of times looking for par on a lot of these long par fours um you're not making up most of your scoring on these holes but the correlation of comparing players and places in the leaderboard to their performance on the par fours can be huge so that's something i definitely look at a lot is the par four scoring normally what i'll do is instead of just looking at par five average if it's a course where there's a high eagle rate um a lot of bombers in the field they're going to be going for the green and two seeing a lot of eagle chances i will go par five birdie or better percentage over par five average because that par five average is just giving you their average on par fives i know they're kind of similar but i am looking for that birdie or better percentage because that also bakes in those eagles as well in the par fives and generally you're going to see um, these rankings be pretty much the same like for instance Webb Simpson number one in par 5 scoring number one in par 5 birdie or better now we start seeing a little bit of difference like Dustin Johnson for instance 19th in par 5 scoring 35th in par 5 birdie or better percentage we can start breaking that down um, you know a little bit more just he's making I would say that he's probably making a lot of eagles on the par 5s in this small sample size so far um, but possibly making a lot of pars and not as many birdies and that's why his average is down maybe even bogeys in there as well um that's kind of you know doing i would probably wait for you know a couple more tournaments with him because his samples are a little bit smaller um to come out so we can read a little bit more into that so that covers the model um and then once that's done with the stats you've now got after the stats model is all calculated I'm just going to open up this here. We have the actual weighted rankings from this, the model, the weighted model that we put together. Then we have stats rank. So out of that model, who's number one in the stats model? It's Justin Thomas. Who's number one in the course history model? Who's number one in the odds model? Um, and then we've got average finish last five and last ten, DK average last five and last ten. So this is another model over here in the gray, and it also adds up to 100. So normally every week I'm looking at 40% um, stats, about 10 to 20% course history. I'm usually looking at the start of the tournament, about 10, 10 to 20% um, looking at outright odds into the model, and then I just kind of mix it around. DK average last five. I'm going to go a little bit lower just because I've had a break here on the actual course history, just because they have had a break. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit more on the odds here. Uh, the course history as well just because it is a course that they use every single year low scoring we usually get the same field of players here um, because it is exclusive to only winners and then of course uh, for members you're also going to see a overall ranking of this model to the right and all the way to the far left of the sheet 
That is not my own personal rankings. That is the computer model rankings. Keep that in mind. I also have rankings of my own personal player pool uh, highlighted on this sheet as well. Green are going to be your core plays. Blue are going to be your GPP only slash secondary plays. And yellow, of course, will be your value plays. So sometimes you're going to see a value play way down in here that's going to be blue. That just means that value play I'm not going to be using in cash games. Uh, it's going to be like a GPP only um, type play. So that kind of covers the sheet a little bit. I talked about some of these tabs down here at the bottom that we can use for our research as well. Now we'll just kind of dig into this week. So looking at the course history, we see that Justin Thomas and Dustin Johnson have been just, they both won it twice. Justin Thomas won it last year in 2017. DJ won it in 2018 and 2013. Um, DJ's also never finished outside the top 10 here, even though it is only a, usually like a 30 to 45 player field. Still, he's the only player. Um, well, John Rom, but it's a little bit, he's only played here three times. He's finished top 10 in every single trip. Um, another one that stands out, Hideki Matsuyama. So this back to the value meter here on DraftKings. Um, you know, his odds to win are, are sixth best, tenth best in terms of DraftKings salary. So I definitely like, um, and then moving over, I like seeing he's finished top five in all three times he's played here at the Plantation course. So he's going to definitely be a core play for me. Um, even his form wasn't too bad coming near the end. It wasn't great here about five tournaments ago, but it's been trending up uh, top 25s to the top 10 range and top five. Um, so I think it's coming for him, and he's a player I'm definitely going to be looking at. Guys, in terms of form, uh, we jump down. Cameron Smith finished 11th, 4th, 2nd. Um, that's where he's kind of finishing out. Uh, so he's coming in with some hot form. 94.1 DraftKings points per event over his last five events. So that all goes all the way back to here. And I'm actually just bringing up the player cards here so I can just kind of give you a look at what tournaments he's actually been playing. So I'll jump down here. Cameron Smith, okay, so his finishes here were second at the Masters, fourth at the Zozo, uh, which this year was in Las Vegas, or sorry, the Zozo was in Sherwood, that was in California, the CJ Cup was at Shadow Creek, which was in Las Vegas, he finished 11th there, he was T24 at the Shriners, and T38 at the US Open, so since the US Open, he's averaging 94.1 DraftKings points, per event and I would say that US Open, CJ Cup and the Zozo and the Masters, four out of five of those events were pretty high class fields. So that makes me feel a lot comfortable about paying 8400 um, for Cameron Smith this week. I know Dane's probably going to be on uh, Neiman in here. Uh, Neiman uh, finished fifth here last year. He's eighth in my model. I'm sure he's going to pop in Dane's model. He, he seems to every single week. Um, definitely going to be on him. He's going to be more of a GPP play probably for us this week. Um, looking for some more value here. Maybe some guys coming in with some trending form. we got Carlos Ortiz at 7,100. He's coming in off a win and an eighth place finish. Um, and those were... Just plugging in the player. I can't show two screens at once, or I definitely would show you what I'm doing over here. I'm just kind of going through player cards. Um, so we got the Houston Open that he won, and then he was eighth at Mayakoba, which was the – it wasn't the following. It was about a month later. So he did have a nice little break in there, showed up, still got a top ten off of that win, uh, which was nice to see after, you know, T35, T48, and a couple of missed cuts in a row. Um, so he hasn't played here before, but it is pretty forgiving. He has been scoring. He's been racking up the birdies. So Carlos Ortiz at 7,100, someone I'm probably going to consider because we're going to, you know, we're going to need probably three or four guys down in this range in our player pools if we're going to want to build a bunch of stars and scrubs with these. Like this week, we've got five players, Shoffley, Bryson, Rom, Thomas, and DJ all over 10K, which the pricing still is a little bit soft because normally in tournaments like this, a lot, any one of these guys could be 12K um, depending on the field. But because it's a strong field and a small field, we see the price in a little softer, so we're going to see some guys that probably shouldn't be this cheap, but they are. Keep in mind, call us stars and scrubs. These guys down here are not scrubs. They won a tournament to make it into this tournament, so um, keep that in mind when you're building your lineup. So odds-wise, Robert Streb's got the best odds of these lower, lower guys. He's 28th in my model, so that reflects. He finished 8th here in 2015, so he's got a top 10 finish. Um, he's coming off a win. So he's got some things that really stand out, and he's minimum price on DraftKings. So definitely be taking some stabs with him there as well. 
um, in terms of odds here as well. Going up, the next best odds we see Martin Laird. He's 21st. He 20th in 2014. Way back in 2012, he finished runner-up, but um, he's got that win just not that long ago. But he's a lot more risky. He's you know he's either at the top of the leaderboard, top 10, sniffing sniffing a win, or he's like missed cut and definitely trunk slamming on Friday. No cut here this week, so guys are going to be playing all four rounds. So keep that in mind when you're building your lineups that all players, unless they withdraw, are going to be playing all four rounds. Um, so Stars and Scrubs is a little bit easier to build just because we know that these players down here aren't going to kill us after two days. They do get four rounds to kind of make up, um, you know, if they have a slow start or whatever. So don't freak out after round one if, you're, uh, if your guys maybe um, – five six strokes off the lead got a lot of time to make it up um you don't have to really worry about a bad round on thursday hurting you on friday trying to make the cut ryan palmer stands out he's 13th in my model he's the only one inside the top 20 kind of in this sub 7500 dollars range 17th last year but again he comes in with some nice form right below carlos ortiz so if you're going away from carlos ortiz who i think is probably going to be more popular i think uh ryan palmer definitely stands out there as well so that's just some plays that stand out for this week as well. Again, like I said, this is just an initial look. You're going to want to check back the sheet. Leading up to lock, my final highlighted plays are going to be on the sheet uh, Wednesday night, probably right around 8 o'clock Eastern, 7, 8 o'clock Eastern, and that's when we post our skeleton lineups um, in Slack as well. And the skeleton lineup is just, uh, it's not a full lineup. That's illegal. Um, we usually do three or four players, just kind of give you a core, um, you know, our cash game core, three, four players, and then our members use the sheet um, to go in and fill out the rest of their lineups from there, as well as using our one-on-one -on -one coaching just to kind of access us and kind of get a feel of um, who we like better. But again, like I said, we have rankings, highlighted plays. If you're not a Roto Pros member, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Get your free trial today. Use that promo code RP50. Get 50% off. And every single week, we also have free rolls. Um, get in those free rolls and you can win your subscriptions. We also give away what we call Roto Pros leaderboard points. Um, so not only does the winner get credit towards their account, um, the top three on each free roll gets leaderboard points, and every 25 leaderboard points is another $15 credit. So that's a free month just for playing free rolls. So make sure to utilize that as well. And reach out anytime in chat. Me and Dane are the guys that are going to be handling the coaching for Roto Pros in the Slack when it comes to PGA. Um, so make sure to hit either one of us up in there. And uh, let's go get some green screens this week, everyone. See you in chat. Good luck.